basically what we are going to be talking about is starting things from seed. And so I thought the first thing that we ought to talk about is what is a seed? We see them all the time, but what really is it? Typically, it is a plant structure that will hold the embryo for the plant in dormancy until its requirements for moisture, warmth, and light are met. And at that point, the seed can germinate and then hopefully grow into a plant. Now, there are some things we don't want to grow really, really well. I don't know how many of you fight the uh, local maple, but there are years that we've got those seeds everywhere. And thank heavens they don't have 100% germination. Okay. So some seed shells are going to be a lot harder than others, and there are some examples in one of the displays back there of something called fava bean. It's also called broad bean. And in Spanish, it's a haba. Okay, so this little guy, once he has dried, has an incredibly hard shell. So that's one of the things we're going to kind of talk about. A regular pea is another one on display back there. Okay, let me see if I can juggle all of these. Okay, so. And this just is a nice garden that's gotten started. And um, so we did what, okay, this is the other things we're going to talk about. What to grow, starting your seeds, free germination, outdoor or indoor sowing, caring for your vegetable seedlings, repotting seedlings to three inch pots or to the garden. Even at this time of year, you can actually start planting some things outside. Now, isn't that exciting? And we'll talk about the differences between direct sowing and other. Other, of course, takes a little bit more. OK, so how do you decide what the heck you're going to grow? Any ideas from here? What you like, what your family eats. I find if you start out there and you've had success, then it's easier to move on to things that maybe are a little more exotic to your palate. Okay. How many of you like arugula? Oh, that's, a, that's good. That's a really good amount of people. But if you're used to having head lettuce, you might want to try growing head lettuce first, and then maybe leaf lettuce, and then maybe other greens, like arugula. Okay? You just, you kind of, once you've grown them, you, you kind of think, oh, I think we could try something else. Part of going with um, seeds is that they are less expensive, and you have a much wider variety in seeds than what you're going to have in plants. Now, there are a lot more plants showing up out there that are what we'll call not the normal things that we used to be able to get. So we're getting a few more. OK, so this is just a variety. And, and one of the things you want to think about is buying from a local grower. And I would say anybody that grows in the Willamette Valley or from a climate that is similar to ours, because the seeds will be more acclimated here and they'll grow a little bit better. And I know sometimes that sounds a little bit strange. OK, this is a chart on page 7 of Grow Your Own. And it's really good because it lists some wonderful things like the vegetable, what can be started indoors and what cannot. And you'll notice leeks, they say, are not suitable. And this is from seed. Um, potatoes, yes. White potatoes, no, not so much. So there are a lot of things here that really aren't suitable for starting indoors and planting out later. And I would suggest, depending on which region you are, I'm thinking probably most of you are going to be region two, which is the Western Valleys from Portland down to Roseburg. And mark out or blank out with paper the regions you don't live in. And it'll make it easier for you to glance across to the page. Also, you might want to highlight the things. And I just found it was easy because, OK, look, we've got April through August that we can plant lettuce. But in order to get them in in February, we're going to start them five weeks before they would normally would go out. So five weeks before early April. So you're talking coming up soon. Okay. 
And there are some of these things that you need to understand. We call them seed potatoes, and they aren't really from seeds. So we won't be talking about things like that or onion sets. Okay? Okay, pre germination. How many of you have heard of pre germination? Soaking seeds? Yeah, because sometimes it's not called the same thing. They could have said soaking seeds, and I'd have been fine with that too. Okay, these happen to be fava beans, and I really want you to notice these little dark pills, almost. And those are good size. But as soon as these guys got soaked, look how huge they got. I have two different colors of fava beans back there. These happen to be the purple, and you need to know that most of them are going to be white. We just had a, a friend gardener that noticed he had some purple seeds, and so he just kept collecting the purples until he had a really good margin of purple. And so we have both purple and white. But you can see how, how much these seeds swell up when they've been soaked. A note here. The larger and harder the shell case on the seed, the longer you may have to soak it. But you want the seed to kind of plump up, okay? Normally we say two to four hours. These little guys, those were almost 24 hours, okay? Lots of fun. Okay, let's see. And the reason we're going to soak the seeds is so that that outer shell protecting the seed can break open more easily. And that's why you want it to plump up. We're providing it the moisture to germinate. And then what it's going to need is some warmth. And after reading a lot more about germination, these guys probably are a little bit further than they need to be. Those happen to be tomato seeds. And I find that they germinate extremely fast in a warm room. So if you have it around 80 degrees in a room, they're going to pop out in one to two days, three at the most. And it means you have to check them more than once a day. I didn't check them, and so I got longer roots on these. So these are going to be a little more tricky to plant. And the other way to do it is you actually, these were in a um, paper towel, a moist paper towel and sealed. These were seeds that were just placed on the surface of some seedling mix and covered. And so they both germinate about the same time. With the one, you're ready. You just put a little bit of soil over the top of these, and then they'll start sprouting in another few days. These guys, you're going to have to plant. And if they've got roots on them like this, you're going to actually have to poke a little hole and kind of put the, carefully put the little uh, root down in the hole and then carefully water the soil to come around the root. So it's a little more work if you let them go too far. Okay. Spacing. Spacing is important. And what I, I usually grow tomatoes. Questions, please, afterwards, if you could hold them. Um, <coughs> If you have two tomato seedlings come up in one of those little starting plugs, which aren't very big, they're between an inch to an inch and a half. I like inch and a half cell trays, six-pack cell trays better myself. But when you get two little plants in there, they both end up being stunted. And I have, you know, you have extra seeds because you haven't necessarily counted out the number of seeds for the number of cells that you've got. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so then you end up with, okay, I've got these extras. I'll just plug an extra one or two in. I think also you're better off putting one in to begin with instead of putting three in. Because you know what happens? You have two or three come up in a cell, and then what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to kill somebody. And I don't know about you. I have a really hard time with that. But if you take them out and you separate them out, you've, you've stunted both of them anyway because the roots have usually intergrown a little bit. Okay. So really taking a little pair of scissors and cutting off the extras to thin them and give them proper spacing is always a good idea. Okay, now we're going to talk about direct sowing outside. Would you believe that right now you can start peas and you can start tomato seeds? Now, doesn't that sound interesting? However, the only ones you're going to be able to plant outside are going to be the peas. Peas will germinate in fairly cool soil. I think it's something like 32 to 40-some degrees, and they're fine. It'll take, it'll take them a while. 
If you pre-germinate and you can just see the little roots starting to push against the seed casing, it looks, looks white like a little tiny spear. And um, if you get them in the ground at that point, then you know the seed has germinated and it was viable. And my problem is I'll put the seeds in and two weeks go by, this is without soaking or pre-germinating, and nothing happens. So what do we do when we don't see anything coming up? We take our little fingers and we get in there to see if we can see if the thing is coming up. Maybe it's the worst thing you can do because you're going to disturb it and then it won't grow. Okay, so basically this is the simplest way is direct sow. So if you don't want to have to start things indoors, then wait until the appropriate time as noted on that chart in the growing your own. Your soil also has to be warm enough. Now we just talked about the peas and so forth. Soil thermometers are really a good thing to have. And you'll note they're red. They're usually a really bright color so that you don't mix it up with the same ones you use for your roast, okay? Um, not that that would probably kill you, but the idea of bringing in something from the garden, how many of you use compost or manure in the garden, it's a good idea just to not mix them. So they're red, they go in the same drawer as everybody else that's a thermometer and, um, or a temperature gauge, but I can tell who's who. <laughs> okay, so we've already soaked or pre-germinated, but they don't have to be. Do you think we've had enough water lately that they might kind of soak out in the soil? Yeah, yeah. In fact, this year I'm a little more concerned that they'll rot out in the soil because <laughs> it's been so wet. And you cover the seeds. One of the things you can do if you seed direct and you want to make sure, if it seems like it's a drier spring, take a little bit of the seedling mix, put that down in your trench before you drop your seeds in, cover it a little bit with that, and then cover it with soil. The seedling mix has a, a mixture in it that will help hold moisture around the seed and the seedling when it first comes up, whereas sometimes we'll have a dry spell, and most of our soil here drains pretty well, unless you've got clay. Okay, so you're gonna put those seeds in at the specified depth. That's usually something you're gonna find on your seed packet. You're gonna water it in. Because you've covered it with soil, it doesn't have to be real good, but don't use the spray on your hose. You'll dislodge every seed you so carefully placed at the proper spacing. And then you wait. Anyway, anyway. And this is one with a, a garden, nice garden here. One of our fellow master gardeners. With a lot of seedlings that are doing really quite well. And, Minimum soil temperatures, okay? Oh, there's our peas, 32 to 36. One, and they'll, go, they'll germinate fine with a little more warmth than that, but that's the low temperatures that they can handle. Potatoes and carrots, and here again, I have to say, the potatoes are not going to be from real seeds. They'll be from a part of a potato. Snap bean, okay, that's 48.50. And you'll notice the thermometer over here, look at that, soil thermometer. It says it's about 36 degrees. So a couple things can still be planted, but the others you have to wait. Okay. This is the biggie. How many of you like to grow tomatoes, peppers, eggplant? Oh yeah, yeah. see those are favorites. They're tropical. Every, and we, do we live in the tropics? No way, okay. So in order to get these guys to grow, and produce fruit, we have to start them indoors. And this shows you how much we love these plants. We will nurture them indoors for a couple of months at least. So now is also the time to start tomato seeds. So we just threw the peas in the ground. Okay, this is gonna be a little more work. So what you're gonna need, and there's a display back there, seeds, labels. The best labels I've found so far are just white plastic that you can write on. Uh, one year I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just spice things up a little bit and I'll get the colored ones. Well, the darker ones, you can't read the pencil on it. Pencil, I still have found to be the best. Uh, Six-pack cells, the seedling tray, seedling plug trays, they just need to be a couple of inches deep so that the root has a place to go. You want a bagged soilless seedling mix. If you use something from the garden, you'll be fighting the weeds. And we just talked about if things get crowded, well, I'll tell you, the weeds do a real number on things. Um, a dome lid or some sort of a covering, a trowel or a scoop, hands work fine. 
Um, fertilizer, usually it's going to be a water soluble because we're going to dilute quite a bit because these are babies. Um, a heat mat is extremely helpful. I've only had one the last couple of years for germinating, but I'll tell you it's very rewarding. And you get to use it over and over, so even though you pay for it, it'll last quite a long time. Grow light, we do kind of a, um, a makeshift at our place, and then of course the soil thermometer on there. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, did I skip one? Oh yeah, okay. This is more words than what I usually put on slides. I'm not used to this. Okay, so one of the things when you get bag seedling mix, sometimes it's moist, sometimes it's not. At least the day before, you wanna make sure you add water, work it with your hands, try to work the moisture around because it's usually got peat in it and it needs to absorb that water. The other thing about seedling mix, and this will be valuable to remember later, is that seedling mix is a very light, and I mean in light and weight, mixture. Okay, So you dump water on it and it'll jump all over the place. I mean, it's just very, very fine. Um, you're going to fill your tray, plant your seeds, and there's going to be some different ways of planting seeds, kind of depending. Uh, you're going to cover it with just a little bit of moist seedling mix. Some plants in the vegetable world like to have light, some want dark. Lettuce, I think, is the only one I could find that really said it didn't want to be germinated in the light. The rest of them said, eh, don't care. Light, dark, we can do it. Um, labels. I usually start labeling when I start soaking the seeds. If you are only doing one of something and nothing else, you don't need labels. But I will tell you right now, if you do four different types of tomatoes and you plant them and they come up and you don't have the markers in them, they all look the same. Really look the same. <laughs> and then you're thinking, okay, what, mm, do I really want that one? So anyway, you put the labels in and you're gonna water it. The spray bottle works really well. And here's the setup that we use at our house. And it's basically kind of a makeshift. We've got a light hanging off a couple. You see, I've got a fan over here to provide some, some breeze for them. Uh, the grow light's only a couple of inches above the little foliage. And a dome. And I, some things end up going, these were some I bought, and so they were repotted into slightly larger ones a little earlier. And you're gonna place it here. The dome only stays on really until, <coughs> he says we're gonna have to hurry. Can you believe that? I think somebody else used up part of our time. So anyway. Um, I tend to have the dome going on a little bit longer because the seedlings are so fragile, but you don't want to have moisture. The dome here happens to have a ventilation to it. Okay, so once they come up, you're going to gradually remove that dome. And by removing it, you can just tilt it a little bit off of the, the bottom tray to begin with. And then you're going to start checking every few days to see what the water needs are and if they need some. Uh, how the heat's doing with it, the grow light is adjusted properly, and um, I'm going to come over here. Um, eventually, you're just going to take it off. Now, if your room seems to be extremely dry, you might want to put the lid back on. And remember this about seedlings. They want their feet warm and their heads cool. Okay, does that make sense? And that helps keep them from getting too spindly. Repotting. The repotting, you'll know you'll need to do it as soon as you start seeing, and this means popping a little thing out, but as soon as the roots come to the edge. See, none of these have wrapped around. You've seen them where they've been just totally wrapped. And this is where, remembering that this is lightweight material, you're going to water it really, really well before you repot it, and repotting just means you're moving it from one pot to the next. Transplanting can be putting it right into the soil. And you may have to hold the little bugger down. You water it really good from the top, and then you have a bucket, and you kind of hold it down until it stops bubbling. And you may have, you're going to nurture it a little longer. You may have to take it from a three-inch pot. Sometimes by the time you've got a three-inch pot, you can leave it in there for a little while. Always remember this. Hold them by the leaves. They can regrow leaves. They cannot regrow stems. Okay. And um, moist seedling mix into the three inch pot. Keep the light and the heat mat going. Water and fertilize. Now when you fertilize again, we're gonna use a dilute and the dilute is always no more than one quarter of the full strength in water. I do it very dilutely so that I can water as needed and I don't have to remember 
when I water, because most of them will say once a month at full strength. And at three inch pots, you can start hardening them off. You know, if we talk about it here. Okay, I'm gonna go back one. Hardening off, how many of you understand hardening off? Good. Hardening off is taking a little plant that you've raised <coughs> indoors and start introducing it to the outdoors, okay? And it can take one to two weeks, depending. If we have a really cold snap where we are not above 35 degrees, you're not gonna to wanna to put your tomato plants out there. They will all be killed. 40 degrees and below, they don't like for air temperature, okay? So you kinda of have to be careful. A little bit of shade for a couple of days, some dappled sun, a day of part sun, and then into full sun. So a lot of things in three inch pots can be planted out in the ground after you've hardened them off. You might want to leave them out for a couple weeks more. And my biggest problem is I leave them out in the day and then at night I want to protect them. I usually remember about two hours after I crawled into bed. And it's a dash out there, cover the things up, or grab my husband and we start hauling them back inside for the night. And nighttime temperatures here can have take quite a dive. Okay. <coughs> Fertilizers, okay, these are in picture form. Nitrogen is for foliage. Phosphorus is for flowers and fruit. And this is our potassium. And you'll notice it's because this guy's got nice edible stalks on it, and then you've got onions. But these are all, these are light feeders. You have some that are heavier feeders. Okay. And then what can we do? We can use a little extra protection. Right now, if you're gonna start tomato seeds or some of these other things that have to be raised indoors, you might wanna think about covering your garden area with some plastic, like black plastic. Clear plastic works really well for transferring heat to the soil, but it also helps all the little weed seeds, okay? The black does not allow seeds to germinate because most of the seeds need light to germinate. That's the weed seeds. The others probably some would. So in this instance, what you see is plastic. This is a tunnel of plastic. This happens to be row cover. There's a sample in the back. It's a sample of this too. And cold frames. All of those things can keep either the soil or the soil and the air warmed. And it only takes a couple of degrees. So here what we've got is a plastic tunnel sealed until the weather's nice. So it's off most every day. This is the frame that supported it, and these are the plants that were under it. And it really does give them a big boost. He's gonna tell me we're out of time. Um, the thing is, it only takes a couple of degrees. And these are the main points we covered today. And we're just about on time. <laughs>